Welcome to the shop. Um, I happened to look in a bin the other day, two three days ago, and I found this little Starrett dial indicator. It's a number 25-381. It was attached in here through a... This was mounted to some sort of scientific device. And uh, the end of the indicator here, I think this is the rack. It was screwed on to something way down deep inside and I had to just like yank it off. I slightly bent it. It might have been bent already, but I think I bent it a bit more. This had already been broken. This little tube here, I don't know what you call that. And uh, the crystal's missing. Somebody milled off the back. I don't know why I'm excited about getting this thing, but it is a, it's a stair dial indicator and I don't have any... I don't have too much stare at stuff, but it's filthy dirty. It was used in a really dirty environment. There's even rust on the uh, on the needle there. If you, can you guys see that? A bit of rust, which I think I can remove with some steel wool. Um, it's it's metric. I don't really need a metric dial indicator, but I'm still kind of excited about getting it. Okay, well here, this is a stare at 441. 25-441 if you can see that there we go and that's the only stair dial indicator I have it's very similar I bet you the back would fit right on uh, it's got the longer travel though I just ran up and down the stairs I went to get this so I'm out of breath now so almost identical just metric Yellow, yellow is usually uh, metric, and white is is uh, standard inches. So there we go. We got a little reference here. Okay. Well, what my plan is to do is to turn this sow's ear into a silk purse. So I'm going to pull it apart. I've been studying uh, on how these come apart. I did a little research. I found this on the internet. This is the actual same number, 381J. There's a J8, which has a little cap on top of the uh, the, uh, the rack. And this slides up inside of a little tube. And that's the only difference. And um, it shows the tab that's been milled off with the hole. So, I want to get started. I've been holding off on taking this apart because I just have been working late and starting early the last couple of days. So I've got my little, uh, where is it now? All right, I got my little jeweler's vise. It's a little tiny mini vise, pan of vise. I'm going to see if we can clamp that in. Because the tab is missing on the back, I'm going to have to clamp it right on the uh, housing here. But it's got the plastic. Uh, jaws which won't damage anything so it's a handy little vice and see if we can pop this cover off oh so it's gonna be hard to hold all right you gotta pry I tried all kinds of places to pry and Right where this uh, rack comes out, that's where it seems to want to come off. So, yeah, I think we can clean these up. That's that's sheet metal, I believe. Could be plastic, but it, I'm going to put a magnet on it. That could be sheet metal. And then this should come off, too. I'm going to see if we can get these uh, two needles off. And then we're going to give it a good cleaning with mild soap and water and a soft cloth. See if we can spruce it up a little. All right, I didn't show that, but uh, this came right off easily. I just put a piece of paper in behind, like so, just to protect the face of that, uh, and get behind with two screwdrivers and just pry up, gently pry up. Oh, that one's too big, that big. There, that one came off easy, even easier. So we'll see if we can clean those up. Let's see if we can get this off now. That looks 
like it might be. No, nope, it's not glued on. Okay, there we go. Pretty rusty. So now, oh yeah, that's aluminum. Looks like aluminum. That should clean up pretty nicely. Let's turn it over and we're going to take the back off. Well, this, these are coming out quite easily. I was worried they'd be, because of that rust, I thought maybe they'd be seized in there, but they're coming off nicely. So there's a lot of weight in that. That's cast to iron or something. I don't know what it is. White, maybe it's white metal. So we'll see if we can remove the movement. And then the next step will be getting it on the lathe and making a new uh, this little tube here making a new one to install in there. I'm going to try and put it in there with some two-part epoxy or JV weld or something. But I think I took a picture off the internet of all the little parts in there. So it's... This one here, you can't see any of the mechanisms. The movement's on the other side of the plate here, so... That out was... bore into here and put a... Uh, I'll take some measurements and make a little tube that goes in there. There's no way I can fix this one. And there's little brass bushings on both ends. See that little brass bushing there and one right here. This one's pretty big actually. It goes almost all the way through. Um, I'm gonna have standing in front of the South Bend lathe here. This is uh my big lathe. I have a smaller one. I have an Atlas 10 inch, but this is a South Bend uh, 14 and a half inch. I just, big, big news happening here. I've just, just moments ago mounted my, um, call it 5C call it chuck, which the backer plate had to be adapted to fit onto the chuck and also I had to be machined to fit onto the spindle. And I had one more little detail I had to take care of. It was not quite seating down against the uh, the face here of the spindle. So it was wobbling like crazy. So I had to get turn it around, mount it backwards with a spacer. I found a spacer and I machined the, a little more into that. <clears throat> I had a buddy do that for me. So I was talking about big news. Well, I successfully uh, mounted a, uh, a piece in a... A dial indicator I've been working on and um, I didn't want I didn't video I, I wanted to video the whole procedure but I just didn't feel comfortable enough to have the camera and the distractions of running a camera so I did everything off camera I've got one little operation left to do I gotta take about 20 thou off there it's about 670 thou, and it's supposed to be 650 from the shoulder here. So, and once that's done, <clears throat> I'm just going to thread some, I've got a 3 8 collet in there, and I've got, the uh, only way, without damaging that thread, without damaging that aluminum, it's an aluminum piece that I made. And I, I threaded it in there. Five sixteenths, uh, number eight, eighteen threads per inch. So, and it's a really nice fit. So the last thing I'll do when I get it all finished, I will put some Loctite in there. But for now, I'm going to take about twenty thou off, and I think I'll do that off camera. And then I can start assembling the whole thing. It's been a long road. Uh, it's been weeks I've been trying to get these things done so I can use the 5C collet and finding time. We have a rainy, rainy day. They're calling for almost four inches of rain today, 100 millimeters, which is about four inches. You don't see that kind of forecast every day. 
This additional rainfall will result in widespread total rainfall amounts of 50 to 100 millimeters over portions of eastern Ontario with a few locations approaching 200 millimeters. 200 millimeters. So there's 100 millimeters. And that's four, it's pretty well four inches. It's a hair less. 200 millimeters is eight inches. It's like seven and seven eighths inches of rain. So that's why I'm inside today. Uh, if I was outside, I think I'd be building an arc. Okay, so we're going to knock off 20 thou off there, put some Loctite, and start assembling it. Can't believe this is happening. Okay, so I'm just, I took it out of the chuck again, or the 5C call it, just to double check my numbers again. And I've got 600 and. Uh, 78,000 so and I'm supposed to be at 650 so I'm going to take about 24, 25,000 maybe 26,000 off I wanted to double, triple check that I got numbers coming out the yin yang for this job I've got the, there's a brass bushing that I've drilled um, for it to fit uh, I've got my measure 650 there I've got uh, uh, numbers, there's the hole 0.192 Numbers everywhere. So, so I'm shooting for 25 thou. I got my two inch travel dial indicator with a mag base on it on the bedway here. And there's the uh, that's the cutter I'm using. The uh, it's a carbide. So I'll cut that 25 thou off. I don't want to be distracted and make a mistake after all the work went into this. So. And then I'll bring you back. We'll put it together. And here it is. Just we're gonna pull it out and try it. See what we got. That's a really good fit, nice and tight. Little Loctite on there, that'll never come out of there. Is it looking like a dial indicator now. And we've pretty well, we've come as close as I'm going to get. We're at like 146 or so. Uh, 646 so that's I'm happy with that so I fit the uh, rack in there and there's a little tiny brass bushing you can kind of see it there that's in it's just kind of floating around loose I did not have the exact press fit drill bit that I needed for that so and it was moving quite freely and now it's just yeah, okay there must be some burrs in there so it's kind of sliding back and forth kind of nicely. This has about, uh, I think it's two, I have to read, about half an inch of travel. It's a metric dial indicator. So it doesn't have as much travel as uh, any other type of, it's more like a test indicator, I guess you would say. So it's looking good. I had to straighten the rack, it was bent. So, last thing we do here, put a little dribble of uh, Loctite on there, thread locker. And the bushing as well, a little brass bushing. It's got a little bit of a shoulder on it. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I didn't. I didn't know that at first because I. I assumed it was one size right through, but shouldn't assume that until I pulled it out. It's 
all back together and works fine it's only got a centimeter of travel but uh, it still needs a new uh, crystal so either I'm going to uh, send the bezel to someone and have a new crystal installed or just order a new uh, bezel and crystal and uh, I'm missing the little uh, tip so I think I'm going to order a whole set of tips for these uh, these indicators but other than that and of course the back is milled off so I haven't really thought about how I'm going to deal with that I might put a a tab on there like I've got all the measurements from here I might make one drill a couple of screws from the inside out and tap them into that a new little tab or or I may just leave it like that I can always clamp onto this 3 8 diameter here but uh, looks awesome and you can hardly tell it's been repaired so Except for the back, you can see that's been milled off. But uh, new crystal in this thing will be as good as new. So pretty happy with that. Uh, it didn't cost me anything, a bit of my time, and it was actually fun to do. So there's the other Starrett indicator I have. It's they're almost identical. This one's in inches. It's got an inch of travel. This one's metric. It's got a centimeter of travel. Okay. So. I was thinking I'd shove this in a drawer after finishing it and be a proud owner, but I'm starting to think I'm going to start using this. When you think about the accuracy of this, it's a one centimeter of travel down here. And uh, there's 10 revolutions here. It's 10, uh, yeah, 10 complete turns of this dial to give you that one centimeter. So <clears throat> when it comes down to it, the 100 increments on the white face here, on the uh, the stair at one inch travel. So one revolution of this with the 100 increments are 254 on this one. So it's, it's quite a bit more accurate. Um, two and a half times actually. So yeah. This is a much more precise, it's probably a much more expensive indicator. I can't find a price on this one. I can find parts for it. Well, I can find part numbers. I haven't researched to see if I can find parts. But this one's about 150 bucks, And I think, I think this one's expensive. I think this one's over 300 It's double the price. And considering it's twice as accurate, more than twice as accurate, so that probably explains why. So I, I'm thinking I probably will use this as a test indicator. You know, why not? I have it. And it looks pretty good too, doesn't it? So, pretty happy about how that all turned out. And uh, when I do get a glass, a new uh, crystal for it, I will uh, I'll bring it back out and show you. I'll let you know how that goes. So, thanks for watching.